Available now. Link below. Moments before facing the most consequential trial in American history, Donald Trump shocked the world with a defiant five-word declaration targeting the Democrats behind his persecution. In this exclusive report, I will take you inside the courtroom drama as jury selection begins in this unprecedented case against a former president. But that's not all. We'll expose the shocking conflicts of interest that call into question the very integrity of these proceedings under a far-left judge and a Soros-funded DA. As Trump proudly takes his seat, flanked by his powerhouse legal team, 500 potential jurors from the hostile anti-Trump stronghold of Manhattan await questioning. The stakes couldn't be higher for the very future of our republic. So you don't want to miss my final thought where I will reveal the true meaning behind Trump's stunning words and what they pretend for the battle ahead. So stay tuned. Now, folks, as we delve into this monumental trial, I do want to touch on a critical issue that's threatening our national security and our prosperity. Just as Trump faces a biased system rigged against him, America finds itself at the mercy of foreign powers like China when it comes to vital resources such as nickel. We rely entirely on imports with zero domestic production leaving us vulnerable to supply disruptions and price manipulations. But there is hope on the horizon. Alaska Energy Metals is poised to develop the largest nickel deposit in the United States using responsible mining practices to ensure our independence. To learn more about their progress and how you can support this crucial endeavor, visit alaskaenergymetals.com after this program. Now, our story begins with a defiant declaration from President Trump himself. In a true social post just hours before his trial, he accused the Democrats of election interference, stating the radical left Democrats are already cheating on the 2024 presidential election by bringing or helping to bring all of these bogus lawsuits against me. Now, the stage was set for a showdown as President Trump arrived at the Manhattan courthouse just after 9 a.m. traveling from Trump Tower. Let's take a look at that moment. See here is the motorcade of President Trump in New York City. Police presence, obviously very high, protesters out, and supporters alike for this unprecedented courtroom trial. This is a criminal case. Now this is from the Post Millennial on Twitter, so we thank them for that. But look at all these cars. Lawyers, support vehicles, Secret Service lining the streets. Wow. It's really a sad day in America that we have to witness this. This is purely political prosecution. Now, outside the courthouse, a scene unfolded as around 200 Trump supporters clash with roughly 40 protesters. Chants of Donald Trump did nothing wrong echoed through the streets led by prominent conservative reporter Laura Loomer. Let's take a look at that moment. He did nothing wrong indeed. Now, before stepping into the courtroom, President Trump delivered a forceful statement to the press, leaving no uncertainty about his position on this trial. Let's go to that moment now. Are you going to lose voters if they're convicted? This is an assault on America. Nothing like this has ever happened before. There's never been anything like it. Every legal scholar said this case is nonsense. It should never have been brought. It doesn't deserve anything like this. There is no case, and they've said it. People that don't necessarily follow or like Donald Trump said this is an outrage that this case was brought. This is political persecution. This is a persecution like never before. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. And again, it's a case that should have never been brought. It's an assault on America. And that's why I'm very proud to be here. This is an assault on our country. And it's a country that's failing. It's a country that's run by an incompetent man who's very much involved in this case. This is really an attack on a political opponent. That's all it is. So I'm very honored to be here. Thank you very much. (laughs) 
Now, he asserted that the proceedings were an unprecedented attack on the nation, stating that legal experts unanimously agreed the case was baseless and should never have been pursued. Trump further denounced the trial as a politically motivated assault, targeting him as an opponent, emphasizing that he was nonetheless proud to face the charges head on. Now, as the proceedings began, President Trump took a seat at the defense table, hands folded and flanked by his attorneys, Todd Blanche, Emil Bove, and Susan Nichelles. Now, the trial expects to last about six weeks, four days a week. Without Wednesdays, it could potentially take Trump off the campaign trail for a significant amount of time. Now, from the bench, Justice Juan Marchand, the presiding judge, rejected the defense's motion that he recuse himself from the case. Marchand also made several other decisions on pretrial motions denying the defense's request to add juror questions and to allow Karen McDougal, a former Playboy model who alleged an affair with Trump, to testify. However, Marchand did rule that the infamous Access Hollywood tape could not be played for the jurors. Now, Trump's legal team made requests for days off during the trial to accommodate personal events. They asked that the trial not be held on May 17th so that Trump could attend his son Barron's high school graduation and on June 3rd so that one of his lawyers could attend his own son's graduation. Merchan stated that he was not prepared to rule on either request but was willing to adjourn for one or both days depending on the trial's progress. As jury selection commenced, Justice Merchan revealed that there were 500 potential jurors awaiting questioning and the court will need to seat 12 jurors from the pool a daunting task considering the venue. New York City boasts one of the most hostile jury pools in the nation for conservatives and Trump supporters, second only to Washington, D.C. Over three in four Manhattan residents voted for Biden over Trump in 2020, raising concerns about the fairness of drawing a jury from such an ideologically biased pool. Now, questions have also been raised about the impartiality of Judge Mershon himself, the judge's immediate family connections have led some to argue that he's incapable of presiding over a fair trial due to conflicts of interest between him, his court, and the Biden administration directly. Matthew Colangelo, excuse me, a senior level Biden appointee, was tapped by the Justice Department to work alongside the far left attorney, Alvin, uh, District Attorney Alvin Bragg, in the investigation in Michael Cohen's alleged payments to Stormy Daniels, which forms the basis of the indictment against Trump. Now, Colangelo's involvement has been seen as problematic, not only because of his direct ties to the Biden administration, but also because the case had previously been evaluated and passed over by a series of district attorneys, special counsels, government agencies, and Justice Department officials who determined that there was nothing to prosecute. Vivek Ramaswamy criticized DA Alvin Bragg's handling of the Trump case. Ramaswamy argued that the charges are baseless and politically driven, asserting that, quote, this isn't the pursuit of justice, it's a political persecution that is tearing our country apart. Let's go to his words now. Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg's prosecution of Donald Trump and its trial begins today. What a joke. I'm against these prosecutions on principle. I think they're destructive to our country. But let's just examine the facts and the law here. Alvin Bragg effectively is prosecuting Donald Trump for making hush money payments, allegedly, to Stormy Daniels and then paying Michael Cohen in a means that Alvin Bragg thinks is falsifying business records. Well, first of all, falsifying business records in New York is a misdemeanor, not a felony. And it falls outside of the statute of limitations, meaning it happened so far long ago that Alvin Bragg can't bring the case unless he charges it as a felony which requires an underlying crime that he's advancing by falsifying those business records that was also a felony. Here's where the legal stretch really begins. That requires Alvin Bragg to say that Donald Trump's payments should have been made out of a campaign account, that's his theory of the case, instead of being made personally or else it's a constructive campaign contribution. That's bunk. Think about it. Look, you've had smart people like former FEC Commissioner Bradley Smith who has correctly pointed out that if Donald Trump did use campaign money, campaign contributions to pay off hush money, that would arguably be an even stronger legal case to bring against him than the case they're bringing now. So in that version of the world, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. They're going to get him going or they're going to get him coming. It's almost as though they decided this is the person we're going to prosecute and then we're going to figure out what we're going to charge him with after the fact. Huh. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened. 
You have Alvin Bragg, a Manhattan DA, who was elected on the promise of going after Donald Trump. For what crime? We had no idea. Just the idea that they had to go after Donald Trump. This is a politician keeping his campaign promise. That is a bastardization of our legal system. That's not how we do things in the United States. And that motivation accounts for why this case is so weak and emblematic of the other prosecutions that have since followed against Donald Trump. I think Trump is going to prevail, but most importantly, I hope we move beyond this phase of our history where you have one political party that thinks it can use the legal system to prosecute its opponents. The same shoe can fit the other foot, and if we keep going down this direction, we're not going to have a country left. In the complete absence of a legal argument, even, to bring this case against Trump isn't just embarrassing to Alvin Bragg, it's embarrassing to our country. I hope Donald Trump not only prevails in this trial, but that we prevail as a country to move beyond this phase of our national history. That's what it's going to take to reunite and rebuild this nation. Amen. As this historic trial unfolds, Americans left to wonder whether justice can truly be served in a system that appears to be stacked against the defendant from the very beginning. The world watches as Donald Trump, former president and current frontrunner for the 2024 Republican nomination, faces an unprecedented legal battle in a courthouse located in one of the most politically hostile territories in the nation. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. My final thought is next. Tonight we stand at a watershed moment in American history, a moment so fraught with implications that it's hard to overstate. So consider this, in an election year no less, we're witnessing the trial of a former president. But let's be clear, this is not just any trial. It's an event that many see as a meticulously crafted assault on Donald Trump, the main rival of a floundering Joe Biden. Why now? Why him? If you're looking for a reason, you don't have to look very far. It's apparent to anyone watching without ideological blinders that this is the trial that the Democrat Party is using as their desperate bid to cling to power. They see the scoreboard. They know that they're losing. Biden's presidency? A disaster by any measure. Their last hope? To eliminate Trump, the biggest threat to their agenda, through legal means. So tonight I call on every American watching, regardless of where you stand politically, to see this for what it is. An attack, not just on a man, but on the principles of fair competition and our republic itself. So join me in praying for Donald Trump, that justice may prevail, that he may continue his quest to return to the Oval Office, not just for his sake, but for the sake of a nation that desperately needs his leadership. This is not just a trial. It's a battle for the soul of America. So let's ensure it's fought on terms that honor our national commitment to fairness and justice. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.